Hey, this is Trevor, education programmer from Stark Parks. When I think of the Civil War, I often imagine the flags of the United States and the Confederacy in large battlefields at places far away from Ohio. But did you know that Ohio had its own Civil War battle, along with the northernmost advance of Confederate troops during the Civil War? In June of 1863, Confederate Brigadier General John Hunt Morgan was ordered to begin distracting and diverting Union troops away from other battlefronts. This would lead to what is today known as Morgan's Raid, and this raid lasted from June 11th to July 26th of 1863, and it would include the states of Tennessee, Kentucky, Indiana, Ohio, and West Virginia. Morgan had over 2,000 raiders with him, and they pillaged a lot of the towns along the way, causing destruction to infrastructure like bridges, railroads, stealing supplies, and really just wrecking havoc throughout southern Ohio and those other states distracting the Union Army during this time period. Eventually, the skirmishes with the Union Army would make their impact on the Raiders. Things would really come into trouble for the Raiders once they reached a place called Buffington Island here in Ohio. At this time period, Morgan was trying to be able to take his men back across the Ohio River into friendly territory. Before dawn on July 19th, he made his attempt at crossing the river here at Buffington Island, but was unexpectedly met by a Union force of 3,000 men and a few gunboats. Morgan's men were outnumbered 3,000 to about 1,800. One of the well-known Union soldiers who was actually killed at the Battle of Buffington Island was Major Daniel McCook. Now the name McCook might sound familiar to you because in Carrollton, Ohio is the home of the Fighting McCooks and they were called the Fighting McCooks because they had 15 family members who fought for the Union during the Civil War. After the battle, Morgan's troops are now on the run. They tried to continue to cross the Ohio River, but they were met with opposition every time. They eventually got to Selineville, which is in Columbiana County, and about 20 miles from Minerva at the edge of Stark County. And once again, they were engaged in another battle. At this point, Morgan had about 475 of his men left. Somehow, he's able to escape from that and is on the run, but he's captured a few miles from Selineville in West Point, which is also in Columbiana County. In West Point, there's a stone that commemorates the spot where Morgan surrendered. And if you go to Beaver Creek State Park, which is in Columbiana County, they still have the tree trunk, which Morgan supposedly surrendered underneath. This is where things start to look a little bit like a scene from a movie. Morgan and some of his captured officers are taken to the Ohio Penitentiary for imprisonment. From the prison, a few months later, they decide to plan an escape using table knives to dig a tunnel out of the prison. Morgan was successful, and he was able to use smuggled money to then board a train and take a train to Cincinnati, Ohio. And from Cincinnati, he takes a ferry across the Ohio River back into Confederate territory. A little less than a year later, though, he's killed by the Union Army in Greenville, Tennessee. This is one of my favorite stories of the Civil War, especially because of its connection to Ohio and our local history. There's a heritage trail that was created that actually allows you to follow along the path of Morgan Traders, and the battlefield at Buffington Island is maintained as a historic site. So hopefully you'll look into these stories a little bit more, and I thank you for watching this, and I hope you have a great day.